We're going to jump into the Word of God. Genesis, it's not hard to find. It's really that first book of the Bible. You can jump right in there. Should be uh, page one. No, I'm just playing. That's not how it works in the Bible. But you can look at Genesis, the first book of the Bible. And we're going to start Genesis chapter 12. This has to be one of my favorite. This has to be something I declare over my life. Here's something. It's not something just for me. It's something for you. And I believe God wants to speak. If I, if, if I was being really, really cool, I think I'm doing a part two to what I just did on last week. And so we're going to talk about next today. Genesis chapter 12, verse 1 through 3. And it reads, it says, Now the Lord said to Abram, Abram, who becomes Abraham later in Scripture, is who we know as the father of faith. He is the father of those in whom we know to be God's people, Israel. He's also father to the Arab nation through Ishmael. The Lord has given Abram an opportunity to be a part of his plan. His plan to establish a nation a nation that will bring forth a savior, a savior that will change the course of the world forever. He says, now the Lord said to Abram, go from your country. Go from the place of your birth. Go from where you are familiar. And your kindred and your father's house to the land I will show you. I need you to pay attention to that verse and the last part of it where it says, to the land I will show you. Pastor, why is that important? Because I need you to understand, while God will call you to a vision, he will not make the vision happen for you. There is something that God has shown you, but it is your responsibility with God to be a conqueror of that in which he has shown you. One of the questions I want to ask you today is what has God shown you? What has God said that he will give, that he will put under your hand? What has God shown you? And if he's shown you, what have you done with what he's shown you? My question today, if whatever God has shown you, you can do of yourself, it's not from God. Because anything that God shows you is greater then what you have, the resource, the skill set, the ability, or the network to do by yourself. He said, I will show you. Verse 2, he says, I will make you. I want to tell somebody today where you are, God is making you. I will make you a great nation. I will bless you and make your name great so that you will be a blessing. I will make your name great so that you will be a blessing. You want to write that down because the reason for God blessing you it's not about you. The reason that God wants to bless you is for something greater than what you could ever do on your own. He says, I will make your name great and I will bless you so that you can be a blessing. 
I'm blessing you to be a blessing. I'm blessing you to be a blessing. I'm blessing you to be a blessing. I'm promoting you to be a blessing. I'm giving you increase to be a blessing. I didn't give it to you so that you could draw distance from me. I'm blessing you to be a blessing. I gave you a child to be a blessing. I gave you the house to be a blessing. You have your PhD to be a blessing. I gave you the business to be a blessing. I gave you your mate to be a blessing. Somebody tell your neighbor, it wasn't for you. Oh my goodness. <laughs> All this time, you were praying, God bless me, Lord, I need somebody. God, give to me. God, increase, enlarge my territory. And you've been a little shy on God fulfilling it because God said, you don't understand that when I open this floodgate open, it's not a floodgate for you. It's a floodgate for everybody around you. I'm calling you to be a blessing. He says, I will bless those who bless you and whom him who dishonors you I will curse and in you all the families of the earth shall be blessed I want to come from the topic positioned for next can we pray today father position me for next amen Amen. God bless you. Thank you so much, musicians. Can y'all help me give it up for our dream team, our worship team, our production team, our security team, our kids team, our greeters, our hosts, our produ everybody in their respective places. Thank you. We could not do this without you. Let's, let's just lay this down real quick. Everything that God has established in your life is not only for your purpose of enjoying, for your purpose of sharing to others to view. What God has blessed you with is for the purpose of being a blessing. And many times I don't understand positionally why God has placed me where I am. And I'm trying to tell you today that God wants to use you. When God says, I want to use you, the reason that he really makes this an understanding is he says, I, I want to bless you, but I want to bless you so that you can be a pathway to future blessings. God is not interested in blessing you so that you can take a picture of it with yourself leaned up against it to tell everybody, look, I got this. Look, everybody, isn't this looking amazing? Watch how many degrees I got. Look at where I'm staying. Look at how I'm living. God said, I did not bless you for you. I blessed you for the person next to you. Tell somebody real quick beside you, he blessed me for you. If I could get the understanding that the reason God is blessing me so is because that he is trying to make me a blessing for the needs of someone else, I would stop finding myself at such a place where I would be praying for God to do for me without understanding that everything God is going to do for me is for someone else. The context is, is that I've become a pathway for God to use to bless the earth. The Bible says he called Abram and said, I'm going to bless you. Now, I can tell you right there, that's an opportunity to praise God. Anytime God tells you, I'm going to bless you, that's a moment to shout. That's a moment to get a skip. If I was in an apostolic church, I know non-denominational is right here, but there would be an organ pumping me up and putting on a high key right now. When God says, I'm going to bless you, you just start thinking about everything. Oh, God, you're going to give me the car. Oh, God, I'm going to be flying. Oh, wait till the shoes that I buy. I'm trying to tell you the Rolex is going going to be wonderful. I'm trying to tell you, you ain't going to know who I am once you see me. It's going to be a blessing. Here's the problem. God has anointed you to be able to receive because God has anointed you to be able to give. There cannot be an anointing of receiving 
without an anointing of giving. God has called for you to be a giver. Not only does the Bible says we need to give, but he calls for us to give in the right manner with the right heart. The Bible says the Lord loves what? A cheerful giver. There's a difference in understanding that my act or my work of giving uh, just comes at the place of me performing the duty. The Bible says there must be some kind of intentionality with it. God says you've got to be a cheerful giver. In order to do something cheerfully, it means you got to do something for something that means something to you, meaning I've got to give out of love. I don't know if you understand critically how much that means to us as Christians, because if you go back to the scripture in John 3, 16, the Bible says, for God so loved the world that he did what? He what? Came. Our salvation is built on a whole monetary system of God doing business on the cross. He was conducting business and transacting things uh, for the benefit of your soul and the benefit of your sins. Uh, he said, I'm going to make a, a transaction take place on Calvary. I'm going to do what's called redeem. There's going to be a redemption for who you are. The Bible lets us know that when he got on the cross, he had to do what shed his blood. There is no greater cost than to be able to shed your blood for someone else. And the Bible tells us that Jesus loved us so much that he gave his one and only son. Here's the thing. is that you cannot love and not give. <laughs> Anything that you love, you give to. Y'all, you, listen, so... Some of us know that we spoiled. And how do you get spoiled? By getting what you want. And somebody gives you what you want because they want to see you happy. They give you what you want so that you can be happy or they give you what you want so they can get what they want. <laughs> Is that a possibility that sometimes that's our deal with God? God, I'm going to give today, but I need you. I, Lord, I need you to open that door now. I, I'm, not, I'm giving an extra $10 in this offering. I know you see me. Lord, don't play. I need that promotion today, like not tomorrow, today, because I got some things I got to do. And so I want to give you a little bit extra. Anybody ever been there before? I, I, I've been there before where we didn't have a reservation, and, and I went into the restaurant, and I said, can I get a table for a couple? And they said, sir, I'm sorry. We don't have any available space. And I looked at them. I said, you have none? And they said, we have none. I said, you have none they said we don't have any I looked and went into my wallet and I slid something past them I said you have none they said right this way sir <laughs> because the idea is that oftentimes if you give me what I want I'll give you what you want but the Bible says we have a God that's so amazing that he died before you were even here. He considered you before you even got here. Can I tell you today, as amazing as you are and as amazing and gifted as you think you have it together, God is saying, I don't even need you. I died because I loved you. He said, I want to give you a posture of what giving is all about. We give not because we get back. We give because we love. And he says, I want to posture you to understand you need the kind of heart that gives out of love. I don't want anything back for you. Why did you give it to me? Because I just wanted to do that. Well, what do you want from me? I don't need anything from you. God has already given me enough. I understand that he has created me as a pathway to get further, to create further, to do more. So here's the understanding. The more that I give to you is the more that God blesses me. And all the time I've been keeping away because I think I am the controlling factor on who should receive and who shouldn't receive. And God says, you don't have anything to do with that. All you are is a pathway. A pathway means I am something that God uses to flow through. The Bible says he will open up the windows of heaven and pour out a blessing. You don't have room to receive. The problem is, is that some of us have stopped being a pathway and we've started being a dead sea. 
The problem with the Dead Sea, if you don't understand it, is that the Dead Sea does not have an exiting route for things to come in fresh and for things to escape. And the problem with it is, is that because it is, it is not moving water. It has no ability to flow. Some of us have positioned ourselves that we believe we're doing God such a justice by giving over our gifts to him. We come in very high and mighty and saying, God, I could do other things. I don't have to be subjected to this point. And God says, you don't understand. You're blocking your own blessing. I am trying to use you as a conduit to be a blessing to bigger things. I'll use you to bless others, to bless a nation, to create a new community if you'll be a pathway. Just tell your neighbor real quick, be a pathway. I need to be able to flow. But the only way I can flow is if I'm not a barrier to the hindrance in things of God. The Lord tells Abram as Abram is coming out of his place, as Abram is coming out of this place, the Bible says called Ur, the land of the Chaldeans. The Bible says that he pulls them from his family, his kindred, his people, and he says, Abram, I want you to go to a place that you've never been before. That's how he called them. <laughs> Abram, that's what he did. He called them idea behind it is that so many of us have a vision and a word from God, but we have a vision and a word without going anywhere. Because we want God to work where we are instead of him taking us and moving us to a place that we can grow to be everything he's called for us to be. The broken part about where we are in our thinking is that comfort is what we crave for. And the comfort of what we crave for leaves us at a place where we don't get to see a new land. A new land means we don't get to see what God has in store. The Bible says, he said, I will show you. I will show you the land that I have for you. It was Abram's responsibility to get there and Abram's responsibility to rest and to be wherever God called him to be. Here's the thing, you can have a word from the Lord, but if you do not move according to the word of the Lord, you will find yourself with a word and no vision to accomplish what he said. My question today it says, God giving you a word, but you're still in the same place you were because you don't believe he can do the impossible. Go to a land, <laughs> I'll show you. Where are we going? I'll show you. How are we gonna get there? I'll show you. Well, how long am I gonna be gone? I'll show you. When we, how, when we, what you want me to take, I'll tell you. Here's what that requires. It requires you to trust God along the way for something you don't already have the plans to do for yourself. And God is saying, I wanna position you at a place where because I've anointed you to be a part of something greater than you, I have to explain to you along the way because if I gave it to you all at once, it would overwhelm you. That's why half of us are living in anxiety because we're living with a vision that we're scared to accomplish. So we're sitting in place with what God has spoken to us, but we have not moved according to where God's called for us to go. So we're on vision overload because we have not trusted God. Just go to a place, go, go, go. Why is God trying to tell you to go? Because God is trying to separate you. <laughs> Anybody know them lonely days when you when you home by yourself and you, you, you were trying to figure out, do you really got friends? Anybody ever been there before? Like you, you start looking down and you're, do I got, I don't feel right now like I got friends. Because if you live the life where it's just like party, party, all the time, like, like I'm not even talking about your party, like you always have something going on. Anybody know about, I always got, I'm always doing something. I'm always, like my life is like, man, what you doing? Man, I'm just busy. And God sits you down. And immediately the anxiety sets in, I'm doing nothing with my life. 
Anybody been there before? Because you believe that being still means being inactive. And you don't know what God is doing in the moments when you're being still because he's separating you and moving you from things that you were never supposed to be a part of because he called you out of. I need you to understand, God has called you out of some things to put you in some things. You can't get to where you're going still, where you used to be. God's gotta call you out of it and put you into it. This is what I would call point number one, the forsaking stage. He's calling you to be set apart. Set apart means what? He's calling you out of, to be holy from, to get a different mindset. Here is the thing that happens in the stage of forsaking. He's trying to change your way of thinking. Everything that you come to God with, that you say you're not, that you won't do, that you don't have the resources for, that's not your gifting, that you can't do. You've been doing this for a long time. My mama said, my daddy said, I can't go that way. I ain't gonna do it that way. I'm just trying to tell you, this is how we've been doing it. This is who I am. God says, I need you to forsake all others. <laughs> but you, you mean like, you mean like my, my cousins, like my second cousins? No, no, he said, I called you from the land of your fathers. Leave all of it behind. Your land, your kindred, everything. Bounce. Wait, wait a minute, God. You want me to leave my support? Wait, wait a minute, God. You, you want me to leave my comfort? He says, I want you to leave what you have control over. To take you into something that I'm giving you that you don't have control over. Because I need to guide every step and every path of the way that you're going so that you recognize at the end, this was the hand of God. I take no credit, it's not about me, it's not what I had the ability to do, but you say to yourself, God, because I understand where you're taking me, this is the separating season of what God is speaking. It feels like you're being deconstructed in the forsaking stage. I promise you this is your stage where you had it all together and then right then when God speaks, you don't know nothing about yourself. Anybody, can, I mean, can we really talk about, I, I, done, I, done, I done filed a whole LLC. I done put a whole, I got, we got a bank account for it. I done got a degree for it. God, you, what are you talking, I've, I've been in school for 75 years to get this. Are you telling me that we walk in a way, all this work, I, sorry, we did and you tell, and God says, I'm calling you and I'm setting you apart. It doesn't mean that I won't use what you have, but the problem is, is that I probably won't use it like the way you want. See. The reason I gave it to you and built it for you was out of the idea that I would use it for the way I wanted it to be used, not for the way you wanted so that it would bless you and that you would be a benefit to yourself. He says, I'm calling you out and setting you apart because why 50,000 people have your degree, you're going to be the one that breaks chains. It's the difference in understanding that God has called me out to create something that's more than I could imagine or think. The Bible says he's calling you to something that no eye has seen and no ear has heard and no mind has conceived. You're trying to repeat, just do it better. God says, I'm trying to do, somebody say, a new thing. If you could understand, like we talked last week, that God is trying to establish you, you would recognize that in the forsaking stage, I've got to let go of some things that I have built up my mind and perspective to say, this is when I do it, this is how I do it, I do it on this timeline, here, don't mess up my schedule. God says, I don't care enough about your schedule. I'm trying to transform you. You're in a trans forming stage. Scripture lets us know in Luke chapter 14, verse 33, it says this, so then any of you who does not forsake, renounce, 
surrender claim to, give up, say goodbye to all that he has, cannot be my disciple. You got to give it up. No, I, no, because pastor, I hope, no, no, this is, there, there are certain things I will do and there are certain things I won't do. Jesus says, then you're not for me. Because everything that concerns me is about what you're willing to give up for me. You lose your life, you gain it. Some of us hold on to things in our lives so tight that we can never be healed because our ideologies trump God's word. You're like, well, the Bible doesn't say it this way, but what does God say? Well, you know, the Bible gives me leeway. We're not here to talk about the testimony of what it gives. The Bible is the testimony of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. The Bible lets us know what Jesus did, how he came, and we believe in the resurrection of the word of God. So back to the point, what did God say? Because if God said it, then it can be fulfilled in your life. If it can be fulfilled in your life, then it means it's for the impact of others. I want to tell you today, there is a set apart stage that God wants to get you in. Here's why this is the most important stage. This is the most important stage because most Christians stay at this stage. They come into salvation, they ask God to forgive them, they're water baptized, and then they say, God, what's next? And he says, forsake yourself. I'm good. Mm-mm, 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 mm-mm. No, I'm not doing that. No, I'm not forsaken. I'm not forsaking anything. You know how long I've been in church? I'm not forsaken. I've already forsaken enough. I've been doing it for a long time. God said, nobody asked you about your resume and how long you have been sacrificed. I gave you the strength to even do what you're already doing. I'm not here to entertain when it is your season. I'm here to tell you when your season is. We keep thinking that we are a part of harvest time and, 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 and I mean, a seed time and harvest. And God's saying, I'm not interested in you letting me know where you are. I'm interested in letting you know where I am. Jump on board or jump off. You know, I, you know, Pastor, I got, it's just been a lot going on and I can't, you know, I can't do this. You know, I just, I can't, you can't do what? Jesus? Because it's, 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 cause it's it, because if you can't be a pathway, then here's the thing. God can't use you to be a blessing. Some of you have worked like crazy to get where you are. And you get frustrated because you're not always seeing the dividend of where you're going. And then you look at someone else who seems like they're easy breezy. And you don't know that all they're doing is being obedient to what God has already spoken over their life. And you're trying to work hard. And every blessing that God has for you to open up the doors for what you need is standing right there. And God is saying, if you would just follow me, I already had the door open. But since you're trying to do seven other things to make sure you get in so that you can solidify for yourself who you are, I just want to let you know, keep working that way. That's probably another 10 years. God speaks to me and says, hey, I want to take you somewhere. He's like, I got you in six months. If you really obey me, I'll do it in six weeks. And you're trying to figure out why God is taking so long. And God is saying, because you you will not forsake all other things. I'm trying to transform your way of thinking because your thinking doesn't allow you to be able to conquer or take in the harvest that I have for you. Here's the thing. Joseph had a dream. The problem is, is that in Joseph's dream, Joseph was not mature enough in his thinking to be able to fulfill the dream that God has for him. David was anointed king, but David was not anointed. His anointing was enough to mature him to where he he needed to be. Yes, you are God's man. Yes, you are God's woman, but you need to be positioned where God has for you to be so that you can take in more. Here, I'm going to get in real trouble with this one. And I'm just going, I'm going to say it and then we go after it. And y'all go after God, not me. All right. Bible says harvest is plentiful. Laborers are few. 
Context of a laborer is someone who knows they're going to work and will be tired. Here's what we do. Harvest is plentiful. The employers are many. Not the laborers. Because laborers understand tiredness is a part of walking through the forsaking stage. Many of us are trying, I love it. Listen, listen, listen. I made a millennial. I made the millennial group by one year. So I declare it, I'm a millennial and I don't care what you say. Wikipedia gave it to me. 81, it says it, 1981, I'm in there. I don't care what you tell me, I am in there. And for all you millennials that's trying to keep me out, guess what, I don't care, I'm there. So for us millennials, I don't know about the other groups. <laughs> As millennials, we find ourselves in a state where everything is now about self-care. And we have a broken concept of self-care because we're doing self-care for ourself. Not for ourself to be who God's called for us to be. It's like, you better take care of you, because if you don't take care of you, you don't have anything else. And once you are gone, there's no other you. Here's the thing. You get to heaven and don't have the purpose fulfilled out that God called you to do. All your self-care in the world is going to sit you right at the gate, and God's going to be sitting there like, so what did you do? Well, I was on self-care time because I had to make sure I was good. God said, I didn't ask you about being good. I called you to this earth for a purpose. Here how I can help you real quick. You are here as a part of a plan to solve a problem. That's what gives you purpose. Did you really think God created you so you could live for you? There will be so many of us that come before God that is going to be at a broken place that God says, what did you do with the life I've given you? And you was like, I was just trying to be as comfortable as I could, taking care of myself. And he says, now, now and back then, the harvest is plentiful, the laborers are few. Because no one's expecting to be tired for what God is walking them through. Everyone's expecting to be at a, hey, 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 not too much. Not too much, God. That's why God is not even asking you to go anymore because he knows you won't leave your comfort. God, let me give you my weeks that I'm available. <laughs> First week and the third week, 12 to one. I got that. If you can't fit in that space, it's gonna cost you more, God. And in order for me to move from that space, God's saying, I, I want to get you out of this world thinking and get you into kingdom thinking. Because if I can get you into kingdom thinking, somebody said kingdom thinking. It means that I no longer think the same way of the world, which means that there is a wisdom and a clarity and understanding that we start walking in. Here is what I'm scared about us as millennials. is that while we're going to be some of the most skilled people, we'll be some of the less people that have the least amount of wisdom and understanding. Here, here's what I know what our generation has suffered from. This idea that the generation before failed, but here's where we're going to get it wrong. The next generation won't have any substance to get from you. So they'll be asking you, how do I, how do I get into a relationship and hold it? Oh, I don't know, girl, because I can't get mine. Well, how do I hold a marriage? I don't know. I can't get married. But we've been together 17 years. I think, y'all, I think, I think that's common, common. I think you're married. Yeah, I think, I think according to the states, you're married. Mm-hmm. I think, I, I think that, here's, what, here's what's going to happen. It is going to be a group 
that has missed the responsibility of what forsaken brings, and that is the idea of discipline, that is the idea of hearing the voice of God, that is the idea of moving in God's favor, and that is the idea of not working out of themselves. I've seen the miraculous happen in my life because God has moved. You've seen things happen in your life because you have made the decision that I'm going to force it to happen, and if it doesn't, then I'll quit. God says, I need you to forsake. Second stage is the forming stage. This is the stage where God's got to work you out of you. Anybody, anybody know you got a lot of you in you? Can anybody, like seriously, a lot of, you got a lot of you. You got, and here's the problem. We know it. We're so smart in this generation that we know our problems. You can ask anybody sitting next to you, what's your issue? Well, let me tell you some stuff about me. I said, wait, wait a minute. And we start walking down the list. Let me tell you some stuff about me. I don't like being with people. But the reason I don't like being with people is that because I need time to myself because I'm a Sagittarius. Excuse me? Excuse me? You're a what? I'm a, I'm a Sagittarius. Nobody gives about the month that you're in. Because you know when the stars align up of the devil, of the devil, of the, hush up, hush up. That's foolishness. And that's what we're allowing to crawl, control the way in which we're thinking. And we don't have God that's in the front seat. We have this idea that I'm in the front seat and my, my, my sign controls me. Because you know these two signs can't go together. And I'm sitting here saying, have you ever read your Bible before? No, the reason we got to uproot this stuff is because this is the stuff we're telling each other and we're living by and we're an unwise generation. The Bible says they have ears, but they cannot hear. They have eyes, but they cannot see. He's like, I'm trying to tell you it's getting worse the more you look at it. And it's like, no, 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 we good. This is my opinion. God says it's impossible. I'm trying to form you. Philippians chapter 2 verse 13 says this, for it is not your strength, but it is God who is effectively at work in you. Here's what I want you to underline. People don't like scripture, but I gotta give it. Both to will and to work. That is strengthening, energizing, and creating in you the longing and the ability to fulfill your purpose. For who? For who? No, for who? For his good pleasure. Gosh. For his good pleasure. He's trying to form, create, make, will you to do, to grow through strengthening and energizing all of these things that come from him for his good pleasure. So how are you allowing God to form you? Because when he forms you, he makes you. When he makes you, he puts you into place. Here's what I'm going to tell you real quick. Some of you, God is placed right here. And he's saying, cool, I've established some things in this stage of your life to form you, to form people, to connect you. And you're like, mm -mm, God, I just want to do church. I want to do a whole bunch of people right now. I got to get me together and self-care. God says, but, but, you, but you're missing the forming. And all you're doing is trying to form yourself. And I want to form you. What's the best way to form? The best way to form is with a little bit of friction, with a little bit of force, with a little bit of pressure. Somebody say pressure. Mm, mm, mm. It's some pressure. Anybody know we run from pressure? Is anybody? Y'all like, no. Wait, do you run from pressure? Yeah, I run from pressure. Because I don't like pressure. Why? Because pressure makes me responsible and accountable for doing something about where I am. And if I have pressure, then it means I've got to make a change in who I am and where I am. And I'm here today to let you know is that the change is for your 
good. But it's the forming stage. Tell somebody, don't leave the forming stage. Forming stage is where you got to follow up. Forming stage is where you got to tell people where you're at. The forming stage is where you got to give accountability to the people who don't like rolling with you, you know, you don't hang with you all the time. Forming stage is where you got to make the call and say, hey, listen, real quick, I need some prayer. Is everything all right? No, it is not. The forming stage. This is the stage where you really want to quit. Why? Because it hurts the most. Why? Because it's changing who you are. Why? Because it now puts you in position to say, God, could you possibly use me? The forming stage is the stage right before God's about to explode in your life. <laughs> it's that stage where you're like, I'm about to quit. Anybody, anybody been there? Any, don't you have to put your, anybody there? Anybody, anybody feel like you live there? You, you just constantly in the, fo- you're like, I'm about to quit every day, every day. I'm quitting, pastor. I quit right now. You don't even know it, but I've already quit. I might start back up, but I've already quit right now. I'm quit. I've quit. You know, I don't, I, anybody just ever been there before? You just like, hey, I, I got to get out of this because it's too much. God says, I want to let you know, I didn't just make you a conqueror. I made you more than a conqueror. I gave you every tool that you need. I've given you everything that you could possibly think. I'm here to let you know, if you could just hold on just a little while longer, I would be forming you. Some of you said, I'm at my breaking point. God said, you don't even know what your breaking point is. I'm giving you exceeding and abundantly more than you could ask or think. Give me more money. Give me more time. Give me more responsibility. I'll be your flow. I'll be your pathway, oh God. Use me. I don't care. I'll cry. I'll be tired. Give me a couple hours of sleep, but use me. I've got too many people saying that because everybody's looking for a comfort place and a larger amount to be able to get. You can't handle any more than what you're already doing. You're at a breaking point, and God says, I can't do that more with you because you're already a dead sea. Why he get loud? Wake you up and then just real quick. (laughs) It was a tactic I used. You woke up like, yes, Jesus, yes. It's all right, it's all right, it's all right. But if you, oh, can I say, if you really had to stand against some of the true things that God is holding back just to save your place, do you know how many people are hungry for where you are, if they could just get an opportunity to get in your, they would, listen, how much they doing it? I take zero. If you just give me an open door, an opportunity, you're going to do what? You're going to make me over a nation. You're going to bless my heritage. You're going to bless my legacy. You'll take, God is saying, I would do it. If, if, if I move you out the way, you don't know. There's seven people already lined up. There are folk lined up for you not to perform. There are, you think you're this? I think I'm the special one. Do you, you know how quick God be like, you don't want to do it? No. All right, cool. Let me open this up real quick. And, you, and we're taking it for granted. Here's the thing where leadership has gotten broken. Leadership has gotten broken because we're scared to feel the discomfort of letting some things go. That's not just church, that's business. Some of us don't want the new way in which we're going, which requires a new transition, which requires a reforming to get to where we're supposed to go, which means you gotta let some people go to get some people that you have, that God has coming for you. Sometimes you gotta open the pathway. Yeah, I want the, you know what, no, that's okay. You know what, we'll do without that this time. And I'd be sitting there like, did they do that? And that's where people say, people hurt me. Nope, nope, I just understand that you're not at a forsaking or forming stage so I can't use you 
Because the next stage that we're coming up to is the stage that's called the fruition stage, where God moves abundantly or more than you can even think or ask. Every time you just begin to walk, you don't understand how you're walking through the doors, how God is putting you in places that you've never seen. You were humble when you first started. You were, you, you were very grateful when you first started. You had a heart of thanksgiving when you first started. But now that you're in it, you think you all at. You think you got it all together. You think you're in the place where things are greater than what you can. God said, I will move you out the way. He told them, if you don't praise me, I'll get the rocks to cry out. I just want to tell you today, I am great. Anybody grateful? God, don't move me. Don't take me out of position. Just allow me. Give me one more chance. I got this thing. I'll be grateful again. I'll be humble again. I'll walk in your presence again. I'll kneel. I'll worship. Whatever it takes, just use me. Just use me. Don't you dare get above God. Don't you dare think your gifting is so skilled and so collected that God will, God will take everything you got and shift you right onto the side and say, you know what? I'll position you right here and you'll stay good where you are and you'll constantly stay good right there. Just keep going around in the same circle, doing the same thing. Looks like brand new people, but God's like, no, because you wouldn't forsake other things, because you wouldn't lay it down, because you couldn't walk away from it and you wouldn't stay with me. You wouldn't be like a tree planted by the rivers of water. He says, guess what? then guess what? The fruition stage will be right where you are. So some of us have become comfortable with where we are. We say, this is it. God said, I never intended it that way. But all I can do is show you. I'll show you where you're going. I'll show you where you could be. I'll show you how prosperous I can make you. I'll show you that if you give by faith, I'll bless you. I'll show you that in your sacrifice, I'll show you in your humility, I'll show you in your inadequacy that I can use you. It's gonna require God changing and shifting and moving The Bible says, humble yourself before the mighty hand of God. I got to humble, but God, I'm coming up here, I, I need you. Pastor, you get nervous? Yeah, because sometimes I feel inadequate. But I never walk up saying, I deserve it. This is my, I, I, you ought to have. No, 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 no. God said, you know how many people are waiting to take over a church like this? You know how many people are looking for I, I will just play with me here. PM, play with me. Will you understand that God positioned you? You you didn't position this. You didn't gift yourself. God positioned you. You would just be like, oh, I thank you. I thought I did this. My bad. Let me give you praise. Every time they call me, every time they put me on a schedule, every time they put me in position, every time they call me to do, I would just what? Thank you because I know I don't deserve it. Philippians 1 and 6 says, I'm convinced and sure of this very thing that he who began a good work in you will continue until the day of Jesus Christ. Right up. Somebody say right up right up until the time of his return. Here's what he's saying. You, you don't get to break when you want to break. He's saying, I'm forming and making you and creating you in such a way. You got to get this thing. This thing goes right up into my return. He says, developing that good work and perfecting and bringing it to full completion in you. I can't wait until the moment where I start to see that it was all worth it. I don't know if you've ever been there before, but some of you are on the cusp of giving up. And I want to tell you, don't you dare give up. It will be all worth it. You will sit back 
with a smile on your face and say, I didn't give up. I waited for the harvest. I sowed the seed. I walked through the time and I reaped the harvest. The Bible says, be not weary in well doing, for in due season ye shall reap a harvest. If ye faint not, I'm telling you, it's coming to pass. Tell your neighbor real quick, it's coming to pass. Tell somebody else on the other side, it's coming to pass. Tell your third choice and grab them, it's coming to pass. Woo! I got a shout right there. I got to throw a high five up. It's coming to pass. I've been waiting a couple years on this thing, but it's coming to pass. I almost gave up, but it's coming to pass. I don't know what you think about me, but I can't give up. Why? It's coming to pass. When you see me driving in it, it came to pass. It's coming. It's coming. It's coming. My marriage may be crappy right now. Oh, but it's coming. When I got it, it's coming in my life. I'm just trying to tell you, I'm on the edge. I'm trying to tell you, there's just some physical blessings that God wants to bless. Listen, you, you need to drive past or walk past or take the bus past. Whatever it is that you need, I need a car. Just keep riding past. It's coming. Don't worry about it. You better walk in the car dealership and be like, what's your name? James? James, I'll see you in a few. He's going to be looking at you like, what are you, what are you talking about? James, I'll see you in a few. A few what? It's coming. Don't worry about it. It's coming. I, can I tell somebody that it's coming? You need to call the real estate agent real quick and just tell them, hey, what's the market looking like? It's a good time. Okay, cool. I'll call you back. I'll call you back. It's coming. They'll be like, why would you call me? Don't worry about it. When you see me next, we're going to close it. It's coming. It's coming. Can I give you one quick tip? In the fruition stage, you start planning like it already is. What are you doing? Oh, I was just looking for the moving company that's about to move me. I didn't know you was moving. I didn't either. But it's coming. Somebody told me today, Pastor, I want to let you know, I've been on blood pressure medicine since 1985. I want to tell you today that God took me off of it. I was like, oh, it's coming. Yeah. It's coming. Listen, real, real quick, you got to encourage somebody. I'm, I'm getting a little ruly and I'm going to end up with this passion off for Sunday. I just thought I'd give it to you real quick. If you understood it was coming, then you would encourage somebody around you who's looking a little bit in despair. And then you just got to let them know, I know it hasn't looked that way for a long time, but I just want to tell you it's coming. Pastor, they ain't called me in a long time. They ain't talked to me. They won't return my calls. I'm just here to let you know it's coming. I don't care what it looks like. Tell somebody it's coming. Tell your neighbor real quick, it's coming. You got to get excited like it. It's coming. I don't care. Where, I, hey, 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 it's coming. I don't care. I'm excited. Why? It's coming. How do you know? He already said it. He already declared it. He already spoke it over my life. It's coming in the name of Jesus. I'm believing it and decreeing it and declaring it over my life. It's coming right now. I am believing God's going to do it anyway. I don't know how. I don't know when, but it's coming. I already see that thing manifesting itself. It's coming. My freedom's coming. My deliverance is coming. My healing is coming. It's coming right now. I don't got to see it to believe it. It's coming. Woo! Let's tell your neighbor real quick, stay in position. Stay in position. Don't be all over the place. Don't be doing everything with everybody else. Don't go everywhere. Stay in position. I'm waiting. Why are you still standing there? I'm just waiting. It's coming. I was sitting in the bed last night, if I can just share this real quick, sitting, praises the Lord, and I told my wife something just, something fell on me heavy, and I knew the enemy was trying to weigh me. Nothing was wrong, and I wasn't accepting depression. I said, I just feel a weight. I said, in this moment, 
I don't feel motivated in this moment. I don't feel all together in this moment. I don't feel adequate. I said that. I said, in this moment, I just don't have it. And I'll never forget. The Lord said, this is your forming stage. I said, God, this stage don't feel good. He's like, yeah, it's not supposed to. Because if you don't walk through this, you'll never know what it feels like to get through something you don't like. Our desire is to always satisfy the place that we're in with either the addiction or the thing or the person or the problem is. And here's what I heard the Lord say, sit there and feel it. I said, what? It says, sit there and feel it. Don't you call a person? Don't you text? Don't you tell nobody? Don't you find somebody to hook up with? Don't you find a person to call and to be like, listen a minute. He said, I need to be your everything. So I sat there. Nothing to fill the void. No activity. No post. No social media. No person. He said, now, watch what my presence will do. And I begin to feel the Holy Spirit fill my room. And I just begin to worship him. I said, I said, I know you're here. Even inwardly, I don't feel like you're here. And I told the Lord, I said, in this moment, I want you to make me. Can I, can I be real honest real quick, y'all? I want in a promise. I said to the Lord, I don't want to be no punk. I said, what do we? He's like, what are you talking about? I said, I'm tired of being a punk to the enemy, always giving in to what I feel in the moment. I said, if, you know what I said? If, if, if the Holy Spirit is real and I got it, I need it now. You said, in my weakness, your strength is made perfect. Then I need you to do it now because I'm weak and I'm broken and I don't feel it. And if this thing is real and you want me to go on stage and tell somebody else that this thing works, I need you to do it for me now. And immediately the presence of the Lord began to fill the room. And my inside didn't change, but I knew the outside did because I felt a shift in the atmosphere. And I just began to praise God even though I didn't feel like. See, I'm trying to get you to a place where you're no longer considering what you feel like as the responsible party to get you where you're going. You are truly trusting and depending on the Holy Spirit. So I said, Holy Spirit, have your way. And the Spirit of God began to move in the place. And I just began to sit there. I said, I don't feel it. He said, it's not for you to feel. It's for you to trust by faith. I'm doing this thing. That's what passion offering is about. It's by faith that I believe in what God said is already yes and amen. So that's what I did. And I sat there. I sat there. And then he brought this to me, as I am. The Lord did not resolve my emotion that night. And the scripture said, Weeping may endure for a night. I said, what kind of foolishness is this? You're not gonna make me feel better? He said, no, because I'm not the God of your feelings. I'm the God over your life. He said, so I'm gonna make you sit in the feelings while I still have victory in the moment. I said, what do you, so I got, the scripture said weeping may endure for a night. I didn't feel better all night. N not all night. I woke up this morning. I said, what is this? I said, wait, something changed. He said, joy. Joy comes 
in the morning. I said, what? He said, joy comes in the morning. I'll take you through and sustain you. Joy comes in the morning. In the morning, I woke up. I said, hey, babe, how you doing? She said, you doing much better today? I said, yeah, I'm doing good. How you feeling? And I woke up and I said, that's what you did. You showed yourself to be true by the way you worked yourself in my life. Not because you changed the way that I feel now, but you sustained me, kept me, and then took me, took me over. The Bible says, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I'll fear no evil for you are with me. So at night, when I was sleeping and the enemy thought he was going to win, I could just feel the Lord saying, I got you, don't you worry about this. My rod and my staff, they'll comfort you through the night. They'll watch over you during the day. They'll be with you. And I said, Lord, take me through so I can prove of your testimony. It's passion offering. It's passion Sunday. The work of God will go further in this church because of what he's doing in your life. It's not about how well I can do what I'm doing. It's about how well that people can see the testimony of God over your life. I believe this today that you're positioned for next. Just tell your neighbor, you're positioned. Tell your other neighbor, you're positioned. Tell your third choice, you are positioned. So don't move because God has something in store for you today. I believe that. Can we thank God for the word today?